The notion of stochasticity is part of the systems described in many word problems in undergraduate courses in calculus and differential equations. This notion can be applied with varying degrees of conceptual accuracy to periodic systems, to unpredictable deterministic systems, and to systems that are fundamentally indeterminate. These are examples of the underlying pictures we might have when we use probabilistic icons such as a wheel of fortune or dice. This oversimplified cell has one copy of RNA polymerase, it's the thing in green, a gene promoter, and three copies of blue transcription factor. Suppose that, again, this is a contrived model, suppose that transcription occurs when a transcription factor collides with a promoter that is already in contact with RNA polymerase but is otherwise bare. At what times is the gene transcribed? Messenger RNA is produced at various times. If you look closely, the motion of the RNA polymerase, DNA, and transcription factors in this animation are not at all random. The dynamics of the spatial arrangements of the system are periodic. Well before the system first returns to its original configuration, careful visual inspection reveals that molecules repeatedly trace out smooth ellipses and figure eights. Nevertheless, this animation displays a property often associated with stochasticity. The fact that there is a distribution of anything at all, there is variety. The time intervals between consecutive transcription events can change without revealing any sort of short-term repetitive patterns because we've prepared the animation so that the periods of the motions of the various individual molecules are different. Durations between transcription events fill out a histogram with some brief, medium, and some protracted time intervals which might fill out a smoother looking distribution had the animation continued for more time. We are sampling molecular spatial arrangements in a way that samples diverse time durations between transcription events. The periodic system sampled various configurations and a diversity of waiting times between events, but in a way that was both determined by the initial conditions and predictable. In the next example, the system is unpredictable. This cell contains water molecules that look like Mickey Mouse. A sequence of collisions following from the initial conditions leads to the spatial coincidence of the RNA polymerase, DNA, and transcription factor, and this leads to transcription. As in the previous easy example, this more complicated cartoon will explore a variety of spatial configurations over time, in a way that will generate a variety of time intervals between transcription events. There will be variety, there will be sampling. A second cell starts with basically the same configuration. Unless you rewind the video, you probably cannot visually tell that this initial configuration of molecules differs from the conditions with which we began the previous animation. While the motions of the molecules in this cell might be similar for the very first moments, to the motions of the molecules we viewed in the previous cell, the slight differences between the two initial configurations quickly build up in these interacting molecular baths so that the qualitative features of the dynamics soon become dramatically different. Transcription did not occur in the second cell in the time in which it occurred in the first cell. The system is unpredictable. Starting from two cells with basically the same qualitative configuration, quantitatively very similar configurations in fact, we get very dissimilar behaviors in short time. Since the initial configuration of the system can only be measured with finite accuracy, it is in a sense impossible to predict dynamics of the system after a short time. The system samples variety. Repeated instances with qualitatively identical initial conditions could develop into a variety of dissimilar future conditions and it's difficult to predict, after some time, which of these conditions a particular system will explore next. The system we just investigated sampled variety and behaved unpredictably. Nevertheless, the way we described it, it could have been deterministic, meaning that precisely identical initial conditions would assuredly lead to precisely identical ensuing dynamics. Fundamental indeterminism is conceptually distinct. 
Consider four fundamental particles, fundamental in the sense of having no hidden parts, no components, no features, no properties, except that they are represented using blue icons. Even the spatial sequence, with one particle at the top of the page, another at the bottom, and two in between, is immaterial, as we suppose it to be philosophically meaningful to postulate that each particle is perfectly isolated, nowhere near each other, nowhere near overlapping. A census taken at time one reveals that there is no longer one of the blue original particles. It's yellow, and it has released a unit of energy. While the initial population was homogeneous, the outcome at time one was heterogeneous. Since by construction there were no hidden properties inside the particles to distinguish them initially, there were no hidden differences that could have corresponded to the different outcomes manifested at time one. When heterogeneous outcomes result from an initially homogeneous population of individually isolated fundamental objects, assuming we are even allowed to consider such ideas, the systems are fundamentally indeterminate. The same, exactly same initial condition generates a variety of outcomes. In such a context, a feature that can be predicted, that can be deterministic, is the proportion of blue icons that will turn into yellow icons. In this case, we expect maybe a quarter, say, of any blue icons still present in a given census to turn into yellow icons by the following census. This perspective is commonly associated with radioactive decay of atoms. Periodic systems, unpredictable systems, and fundamentally indeterminate systems are distinct. In the first example, molecules followed periodic paths. The possibility of finding different arrangements came from finding the molecules at different locations along their deterministic paths, not from jiggling or randomly changing the paths themselves. The second example was more complicated. Even a small discrepancy in initial conditions could quickly lead to qualitatively dissimilar outcomes. In the third example, we asserted that particles were initially homogeneous, so when they displayed different outcomes, there was no pre-existing feature that could have indicated which blue icon was going to turn yellow. The first example sampled various configurations and various inter-event time intervals. If we wanted to see a given configuration turn into a dramatically different spatial arrangement, we could just wait, and the system would eventually get there. Maybe not soon, and certainly not in any surprising way. The second example was unpredictable. Two qualitatively similar initial conditions uh, could soon thereafter access qualitatively dissimilar behaviors. In contrast to the periodic predictable first example and the unpredictable second example, the third example is indeterminate. A mathematical concept often used in any of these situations is a memory-free Markov process in which a variety of behaviors or events is possible in an upcoming short time interval and in which the distribution of possible behaviors is not influenced by any aspects of the time sequence of configurations the system previously explored that are not already explicitly represented in the immediate present configuration of the system. For which of these three columns of figures do you think a Markov process is most idiomatic? One set of icons we use as a shorthand for a Markov process is the spinning of a wheel of fortune. The condition of two systems, initially in state A, is the result of two independent wheel spins. Landing in the blue sector maintains state A. The condition of the systems at the next census is likewise obtained by using another set of wheel spins. In this case, the top wheel stops in the orange sector, indicating a change to state B. The other system does not necessarily land on orange at the same time, but might stay in state A for a couple more spins. Is the spinning of the wheels precisely identical to a Markov process, or merely an intuitive illustration? Does the spinning of wheels particularly resemble any of the three concepts listed at the top of the screen?
Drawing Wheels of Fortune is time-consuming because the colors and sizes of the sectors of the pie charts have to be readjusted for different animations. An alternative is to replace the wheels with dice. Again, does the rolling of dice precisely represent a Markov process, or are these concepts only approximately the same?